I want to welcome you to this face-to-face. -face. I'm Evangelist Nathan Morris. I'm joined with a special guest. He's really family to all of us at Shake the Nations. Michael Dow is the founder of Burning Ones, an incredible man of God, a fiery preacher. I've ministered alongside Michael and just seen the hand of God upon his life. I know today you're going to be truly blessed by this ministry. I want to welcome you, Michael. Thank you, bro. It's amazing to be with you. Tell us what God is doing right now. I know we've been through the whole COVID season, and for many evangelists, it's been a real time of adjustment, but God is still moving. He's still on Come the on. throne, and we've seen God move mightily through Shake the Nations, but what is God doing through Burning Watts? Yeah, I think this season has revealed in a great way the difference between those who have had a career and those who have felt called. Wow. Because um, when things began to shake, when the global situation seems to change, um, our hearts began to burn in a greater way than they ever had. Um, a greater way with the sense of the call, a greater way um, to go. Um, and so, you know, we've seen certain folks try to reinvent themselves, kind of change the plan mm -hmm. in response to what the world is doing. Mm -hmm. um, this isn't the plan at all. We know the plan, right? God has called us. He's with us. He's still doing extraordinary things throughout the world. Um, you know, God hasn't pushed pause on his purposes Amen. because the world seems to be changing right now. Amen. Um, so we just have to figure out what does it look like to still be called in the moment that we're living in, you know, to really lay hold of God's purposes for this season of history. Um, and so we've seen God do just crazy things, man. Like, like we've grown, um, our tent pegs are expanding. Uh, we seem to be more fruitful than we have been in years past and all in a moment when the rest of the world is saying that it's not supposed to be possible, Yeah. right? All things are possible. You know, I think we're in that season where the Holy Spirit is really calling his bride to intimacy. Mm -hmm. I know he's always called us to that, but sure. in these times, you know, where authenticity mm -hmm. that, you know, Jesus said, didn't he, in John 3, 3, he said, that unless you be born again, mm. you cannot see the kingdom of God. That's right. I want you to talk to us just for a moment about what it truly means to be born again. I know we quote that a lot, yeah. but what is the true revelation of what Jesus meant when he literally said, you must be born again? Right, so, so that's an amazing point, because <laughs> I think effective communication is built on having great concepts, right? We have to share the concept in order to be able to effectively communicate. Mm -hmm. And the concept of being born again, uh, especially, right, we live here in the West, especially with America's version of Christianity. Um, in America, you can claim to be a Christian because it has its own definitions. It, it has a way of life that it has associated with what being a Christian means. Um, Christianity has become another religious checkbox. Uh, in a simple way, if you attend meetings, give in offerings, and pray before your meals, you can call yourself a Christian. Well, that may be the way that America or the system of the world has defined Christianity, but to Jesus, in John 3, we find a radically different definition. He says, unless a man is born again, and he's talking to a religious leader, right? He's talking to Nicodemus, a Pharisee, someone who has all of the exteriors, someone who has the, um, the imagery, someone who has all of the resume of what living the right life, according to religiosity, is supposed to be. He's perfected the art of the, the externals. And here's the clear definition, isn't it? Because Jesus speaks to religious and he says, you are like white, whitewashed tombs, yes. full of dead men's bones. Yep. And right in John 3.3, 3, he's defining, he's, he's, he's dividing the sheep from the goats. Talk to us about it. So, so I think, you know, especially in the West, right, with, with the version of Christianity that we have, you meet people who claim to be Christian that aren't actually born again. Wow. You meet people that claim to be Christian because they're going through the religious hoops. They're living their life in a religious rhythm. They're uh, associating themselves with all of the right activities or, you know, they're trying to perfect all of the right externals or images. They're adopting the right language. They're wearing the right merch. But on the inside, they've not been born from above. Right on the inside, they haven't had an encounter. They haven't had an experience where, you know, we get to see the beauty of the work of the Trinity in the born again experience. It's the desire of the Father that through the power of the Spirit, He would reveal the beauty of His Son. 
All right, so you have Father, Spirit, and Son working together so that a man can be born again. And that experience has to happen in what Jesus says in John 3 from above. He says it's not something that can happen from below. Mm -hmm. So I think the world tries to graft people in to a religious definition because they know it only affects the externals, right? And so man, much like the Old Testament with the law, right? The law was supposed to reveal you can't actually do this. Cling to God. But man is always trying to perfect a way to paint the outside of the house, which is what Jesus said in Matthew 23. Mm -hmm. You're whitewashed tombs. You're beautiful on the outside, but on the inside, you've got a corruption. You're hollow. You're bankrupt. So I think man is always trying to paint the outside, right? We're trying to give a cosmetic job to the exterior when the inside is alive with corruption. Wow. And we all realize we're, we're going to meetings, we're singing songs, we're giving in offerings, we're praying before meals, but we don't really know God for ourselves. We haven't had this experience where by the Spirit, the Father has revealed the beauty of His Son to me. And I've seen Jesus in a way that now has brought me to a place by the Spirit where I can, through this glimpse, give Him my life. I've seen you. I know you're real. Even if it's just a glimpse, even if it's just a little bit, I recognize you are the king of all creation. You're the savior of the world. You paid a price for my trespasses, and I'll give you my life. And let's, let's just go a little bit deeper for those that may be watching this, and they don't quite understand, like, how can you be born again? <laughs> Jesus was asked that question. Now, we're not talking about a fleshly born again. No. Jesus separated again the flesh from the spirit. Yep. What we're talking about is, is that when we are dead in trespass and sin, it is through the blood of Jesus that yes. by the spirit, our spirit is made alive and we become one with Christ. Talk to us a little bit about that, that it is a supernatural act. It can't be done by achievement. It can't be done through the processes of religion. Yep. It must be by the Holy Spirit. All right, so that was Nicodemus' response. Now, this is a religious leader. He's one teaching uh, religiosity and doctrine, if you would, according to the Word of God. And he says, are you telling me the goal is for a man to enter into his mother's womb again? Surely that can't be the plan. And this is the mindset of the flesh, right? Yes. This is when we try and look at God through the natural mindset. We must yeah. have revelation. But Paul in Ephesians 2, he creates two categories. And it's exactly what you said. One category is at one point we were all dead in our trespasses. Everybody, every rich man, poor man, famous man, unknown man, um, those who have power and prominence and politics, those who have absolutely nothing and are living on a street corner. Every man was dead in their trespasses. We are born into it, right? We're born into it. That's the category that all of creation, that the inheritance, the, the consequences of the garden, yeah. right? Adam's choice has fallen on all of humanity. That's the category we're born into. We're dead in our trespasses living a life governed by the tyranny of the powers of the air, overindulging in the lustful thoughts of the mind and the cravings of the flesh. But then that beautiful two-word insertion in Ephesians 2, but God. <laughs> when there was nothing that man could do to change the category, when there was nothing that any of us would ever be able to provide in order to satisfy um, a choice to be able to come out of being dead in our trespasses. That's the category that all of humanity is born into. And there's, it's hopeless. There's nothing to do mm -hmm. without those two words. But God. Glory to God. Being rich in his tender, loving mercy. Hallelujah. Did something that no one else could do. He lived the life that none of us could live. He died on behalf of all of us. He was raised as the first one of every one of us and now has created a pathway or has now created the choice through a born again experience for man to actually change the category that he finds himself in. Yeah. You don't have to remain in the category of dead in your trespasses. You can now be born again. And by being born again, Paul tells us in Ephesians 2, you come alive to God. And your through spirit the, is made alive. Your spirit is made alive to God. And by the power of his spirit, you can live in a beautiful, ongoing communion and relational experience with his son. God has done this. God has done 
what no one could do to now give us access to a life that none of us deserve to actually be able to live. And this is the beauty of the gospel. This is the good news. <laughs> and this is why it, Always cannot, good news. <laughs> it cannot be earned, it cannot be achieved. It must be received by faith. I'm going to repeat again, John 3, Jesus said this, no one can see or enter the kingdom of God lest you be born again. Wherever you are right now, if you don't know Jesus as your Lord and Savior, it's a simple prayer. Ask him into your heart. Say, Lord, forgive me of my sin. And the promise is this, you will be born again. This has been Face to Face with my special guest, Michael Dow. We'll see you next time. We want to thank you for watching. If you want to know more about Shake the Nations Ministries and our YouTube channel, why don't you click the subscribe button? Also, if you want notifications of our brand new videos, why don't you click the bell? There's so much more in Shake the Nations Ministries that you can get involved in. Why don't you click also the link to our website to find out more? To find out more about our humanitarian arm, Hope of All Nations, make sure you click the Hope of All Nations button where you can learn about us taking the gospel to thousands of children around the world and our work in the ground of the nation of Honduras. We can't wait to see you next time.